Tell us more about this report and how it fits into testimony that Dianne Feinstein released yesterday. Well, Stephanie, this is a report put out by the Democrats on the Foreign Relations Committee here in the Senate. They did it with just Democratic members and staff. They did it with just open source information. This is not a classified document. This doesn't deal with classified intelligence. It's purely with what we in the public could and Democrats have decided should know. The report goes back decades and details the buildup of Russia's efforts to destabilize other democracies, to interfere in other countries' elections. It, it shows Putin developing this asymmetrical ability to interfere in elections. It admonishes the Trump administration and Republicans for not doing enough, and it lists some changes that it thinks the United States could make. But the admonition of the Trump administration is number one on this, saying that essentially, without the president agreeing that this is a problem that needs to get addressed, it doesn't really go anywhere. I want to read you a segment of the report that details this. It says, while President Trump stands practically idle, Mr. Putin continues to refine his asymmetric arsenal and look for future opportunities to disrupt governance and erode support for the democratic and international institutions. Now, the report says that the United States should, with other countries, address this in almost the same way we do with terrorism or other international threats, band together with NATO, work with our allies in Europe. It's fascinating. And it does come in the context of Senator Dianne Feinstein releasing unilaterally this transcript of the Glenn Simpson interview before the Judiciary Committee yesterday. Democrats, by and large, are starting to stand up and say they're not going to wait for Republicans to push back with the midterms, the next round of elections, the next opportunity for Russians to meddle so close. All right, let's bring in Kirsten. Kirsten, this is clearly a blow to the White House because thus far the president is unwilling to separate the idea of interference from collusion because the two don't are not the same. When I talk to people in the White House, they say as soon as you say the word Russia, the president sends you packing. So what is the administration saying about this? The administration hasn't responded yet, Steph. We're hoping to hear from the president a little bit later on today. We'll definitely get to ask him some questions. He's going to hold a joint press conference with the prime minister of Norway at 3.30 today. And at about 11.30, he's going to be holding a cabinet meeting. So hopefully in one of those two venues, we'll get some type of reaction. But look, there is no issue that gets under his skin more than the issue of the Russia probe. The administration would push back on some of the allegations made by Dianne Feinstein that Garrett was just laying out. Uh, broadly, they would say that, look, the president has raised the issue of election meddling with President Putin when they have met. He set up a cybersecurity commission, for example. But uh, Democrats and, frankly, a number of Republicans have felt as though those actions haven't gone far enough. Now, all of this comes, Steph, as the president's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, uh, is filing a lawsuit against BuzzFeed for uh, publishing details details of that now infamous dossier, Cohen saying that uh, details within the report are false, are provably false, for example, uh, saying that his wife is Russian. He says that that's not the case, according to the suit. Uh, so what you're really seeing is stepped up pushback uh, against this broader narrative that's being laid out by Democrats. And as Garrett rightfully points out, ahead of the midterm elections, uh, expect this to continue to be a big focus. And again, uh, undoubtedly, the president will get some questions about this today during that news conference, Steph. All right. And Michael Cohen, if you're watching, you are always welcome to come sit down right here and have a talk all about it. I want to bring my panel in. It's a great one. Josh Ernest, an MSNBC political analyst and former White House press secretary for President Obama. Peter Wenner worked for the last three Republican presidents and is currently a senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. And Matt Miller, an MSNBC News justice and security analyst, as well as a former spokesman for the Justice Department. Gentlemen, welcome, Josh, to you first. Yes. Does this seem like a multi-day coordinated effort on the part of Democrats to say to the American people, we care about Russia interference, we care about your safety, listen to what we have to say? Yeah, uh, Stephanie, I think this is actually more a year-long effort by Democrats to make clear to the American people that the threat of Russian interference in our political system is something that we should take seriously. This is something that we certainly were talking about in, in the Obama White House uh, after the election uh, as something that, that Americans were going to have to confront over the long term and warning right away that Republicans would see that, the, or that R Russians would see that this is something that had succeeded in the 2016 election and something that they were likely to re-up in 2018 and 2020. The reason we know 
know that's true is because we've seen the Russians ramp up their efforts in European elections that have taken place since Mexico. 2016. Mexico, certainly in Macron's election in France, we saw uh, evidence of Russian interference in Germany. They have uh, encountered the same thing. So this is something that we should take seriously. And unfortunately, right now, there's only one political party in the United States that believes that that is not, not just something that we should acknowledge, but something that we need to try to combat. But that's not necessarily the case, because there are Republicans who will acknowledge, who do acknowledge, that there was Russian interference. So if Democrats' goal is truly to help the American people and put this thing out there, Matt, why wouldn't Democrats try to get some Republicans on board, especially because this was public information? Well, full disclosure about this report, first of all, my wife works on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and helped work on this report. So I got a bootleg copy of it last night and got to, got to go through it. Um, it's That's a great an exciting night at home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would encourage everyone to read the report. It is quite detailed. Um, it, it's a great question. I think the problem that you see is Republicans on the Hill, while they will give lip service to the idea that we ought to do something more to protect our election, when it comes to actual policy reforms, actually putting something into place, you don't see them actually moving on it. You saw them move a sanctions bill to, to punish Russia for, for, uh, for interference, but they're leaving most of it in the hands of the President of the United States, Donald Trump, who we've seen is unwilling to take any action. And I think you have to, to step back and ask the question, why? 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 The most generous interpretation is he thinks that any time you talk about interference, it delegitimizes his election somehow, and so he doesn't want to do anything to punish R Russia, to respond, or to prepare for the future. But there is a more nefarious interpretation of it, too, that I don't think we should take it off the, off the table. And that's that he welcomes their help, he wants them to do it again, he wants to benefit from it again. It's stunning. Had President Trump been more hardline as soon as he won this election about Russia, we might not have a Robert Mueller investigation. Peter, we also saw yesterday a number of House Democrats release a letter, and I want to share a piece of it. They sent it to uh, Speaker Ryan, where they said, rather than pursue the truth on behalf of the American people, House Republicans have waged an aggressive campaign to shut down congressional and criminal investigations into Russia's attack. Are Republicans making a mistake here, given you could look at the last NBC poll out there. Americans are worried about Russian interference. Are Republicans making a mistake in falling in line behind the president here? Yeah, I think they're making a mistake, a moral mistake, and I think they're making a, a political uh, mistake. I mean, the Republican Party, unfortunately, sees itself as the sword and shield um, of Donald Trump on any number of issues, but probably preeminently on Russia. But why? And, uh, they were Republicans <clears throat> long before he was. They actually stand for Republican beliefs. They believe in them. Well, yeah, once upon a time they did, but there's been an inversion, which happens when somebody like Donald Trump takes over your party. And unfortunately, people who had a certain principled stand, or at least one thought that they were principled, once Trump took over, um, they shifted. Um, and, and he's broken, uh, broken their spirit and, and uh, changed their views. But look, their view, uh, and I strongly disagree with it, um, because I think it's wrong, and I think ultimately they backfire, but their view is that they have to protect uh, Trump. He is the king. And uh, if he goes down, they go down. Um, but in my mind, Russia is the Rosetta Stone of this administration. And when the history of this administration is written, Russia is going to be right there in the, in, in the top paragraph. And what will happen eventually is that Robert Mueller will come out with his report, and it will be thorough, and I think it's going to be searing. And the people who stood with Donald Trump now are going to look very, very uh, bad. And wow. should. Wow. All right. Then I want to talk about this newly released testimony from Fusion GPS co-founder Glenn Simpson, where he talks specifically about the Christopher Seale dossier, and he pushed back against his argument that it is a phony document. And I want to share what he said. Quote, it is political rhetoric to call the dossier phony. The memos are, file, are field reports of real interviews that Chris's network conducted, and there's nothing phony about it. We can argue about what's prudent and what's not, but it is not a fabrication. Josh, when you saw this transcript, what was your thought? Uh, my thought was... I mean, he went to the FBI. He, he did go to the FBI, and the FBI told him, again, according to this testimony, that they were already investigating what was right. happening. So it certainly exposes the Republican partisan lie that this dossier was the seed of the FBI investigation. No, the FBI was already investigating because they'd already collected their own evidence that was corroborated in the dossier. 
Uh, again, this is according to that testimony. I'm not speaking based on any knowledge that I have because I don't have any knowledge about the uh, about the FBI investigation. But I, I think what is clear is it goes to the thing that I was saying before, Stephanie. There seems to be more, much more of a concerted effort on the part of congressional Republicans to investigate the FBI and to investigate the Justice Department, at, uh, uh, or at least to countenance those in the Republican Party who believe in that kind of investigation, uh, instead of actually trying to get to the bottom of what the Russians did, what impact it had on the election, and what can we do to protect our, in, in, our, our political debates and our election infrastructure from that kind of runner, Russian interference in the future. And that is uh, a situation where uh, the priorities that are being exhibited by congressional Republicans are totally wrong, uh, both when it comes to the politics, but also when it comes to safeguarding the country. How demoralizing is that for the Department of Justice and the FBI? Uh, very. I mean, if you talk to people in those institutions, and indeed on the record, the leaders of those institutions, it's really, it's really quite extraordinary. I didn't you mention earlier this inversion. One would be the uh, Republican position on Russia, which, going back to the Soviet Union and up until 2012 with Mitt Romney, where there was a very strong position against Russia, standing against them. That's totally been inverted. Then you have this protection of institutions, including law enforcement institutions like the FBI. So for decades, the Republican Party positioned itself as a protector and defender of those institutions against attacks from the left. And now what's happening, the tip of the spear in these attacks, whether it's the intelligence agencies or the FBI, um, are, um, are Republicans. And that's doing huge damage to the political and civic uh, fabric of the country. But again, I, I want to underscore, I think in the end, there will be a really high political price to pay because the truth will out. And this Mueller investigation is going forward. And he is a very, very um, skilled uh, prosecutor and investigator, very comprehensive. And he knows so much more than we do. And when this is all put forward and put out with sunlight, um, people will be judged by where they stood at these particular moments throughout. And I just think that the Republican Party is going to look very, very bad. Releasing this testimony, Chuck Grassley said this was reckless, it was, it was dangerous, this is going to limit their ability to get honest testimony from other people. But the White House seemed okay with it. Lindsey Graham seemed okay with it. What's your thought, Matt? Um, look, I think the reason Di Dianne Feinstein did this is very clear. She has decided that Chuck Grassley and Lindsey Graham are not acting in good faith in, the, in this investigation. Democratic staff and Republican staff were both in this interview with Glenn Simpson. They saw how um, uh, Christopher Steele was portrayed. They saw the kind of patriotic, you know, more patriotic for in terms of protecting U.S. National Security Interests Act than Republicans are doing in blowing the whistle. By the way, the they word patriotic is, <clears throat> is misused every minute of, I mean, like, Donald Trump Jr. every minute talks about what it means to be a great patriot. I would guess not dogging on the Department of Justice would be on that list. Yeah, well, as well as calling the FBI when you find out that a foreign government is trying to <laughs> interfere with the election ding, ding, and not saying, yes. I love it. That would be the most, that would be the most right. patriotic thing. That's what Christopher Steele did, and that's exactly the opposite of what Donald, Donald Trump Jr. did. So I think when, she, when Dianne Feinstein saw what Lindsey Graham and Chuck Grassley did last week, to try to, to refer Christopher Steele for criminal charges, to ask that he be prosecuted by the Justice Department for this act of whistleblowing, for this act of trying to protect national security, that was a clear sign they're not acting in good faith. They don't want to proceed with a real investigation. She decided she had enough. She was going to release it herself. Feinstein said, we're not going to take it. No, we ain't going to take it anymore. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.